This is Dr. Lewis Blevins of Pituitary World News. Today we're going to look at the MRI of a patient with Cushing's syndrome. This patient nearly doubled her body weight in 10 months. Classic for hypercortisolism due to Cushing's syndrome. The ACTH level was elevated, <clears throat> confirming an ACTH dependent source. And of course the urine cortisol was high. Salivary cortisol levels were high. So there's no question about the diagnosis. An MRI was obtained. This is the study. So we're going from front to back to find the salitarsic and the pituitary gland. And here we are in this region. You can see the pituitary gland here, enhancing with contrast. It's the carotid siphon that I've talked to you about looking for. Siphon here, glands in the middle, between the two siphon on both sides. Here's a little bit of the pituitary stalk, maybe coming off a little bit towards the left. There's uniform enhancement of the cellar structures. This is the optic chiasm sitting above the pituitary. You can see there's just millimeters separating this gland from the visual pathways. This pituitary gland is what I would say heterogeneous in its appearance. It's sort of swirly, different levels of contrast. Maybe a little bit less here, but then also a little bit less here. <clears throat> so this post-contrast image shows the glands enlarged, heterogeneous in nature, varying areas of hypo-enhancement. So where's the tumor? Pretty sure this patient has a tumor. It's a classic example of the value of dynamic contrast enhancement. Here's the gland with no contrast in it whatsoever. Start to look at the, see the contrast flowing through the body here in this part of the brain. You can see the dark now we're following the contrast through the brain, the body here. Several MRIs obtained in quick se sequence. Now we go back a little bit more towards the pituitary gland. We look at the contrast here. The contrast is appearing. Now it's starting to get into the pituitary gland and it's showing us the gland is enhancing normally. This lesion on the right side is has a delayed enhancement. That's the pituitary tumor. Again, further cut back. See the contrast just starting to show up. Now it's showing up. The pituitary is enhancing before the tumor enhances. Look how beautifully illustrated this is with dynamic contrast enhancement. And you didn't see this on the normal post-contrast image. And the reason being is that the pituitary enhances before the tumor, but the tumor has blood supply, so it's going to enhance as well. And if you do the scan late enough, the pituitary and the tumor have equal degrees of enhancement and you can't differentiate between the two, the two tissues based on their blood supply. And that was the case in this patient, whereas getting the early scans after contrast administration differentiated between normal gland and tumor. So it's a wonderful example of dynamic contrast enhancement and how valuable the study is. Now this is towards the back part of the pituitary so we're not in the tumor any longer. Maybe just the back recesses of the tumor, but here clearly this is tumor, normal pituitary. The cavernous sinuses enhance too uh, because they are filled with blood. This is venous blood. It's really nice here. You can see that uh, these are cranial nerves here and here, and there's cavernous sinus blood between the tumor and the nerves, which tells me this tumor is probably not invading the cavernous sinus. If it were, the pressure would be so great in the cavernous sinus that you wouldn't see this bit of contrast enhancement within the sinus there. So this tumor may be compressing the cavernous sinus, but it's probably not invading it. Uh, the surgeon will know when he gets in there uh, and actually tries to remove this tumor 
whether it's invading or stuck to or whatever the, uh, that you want to say to the cavernous sinus, but so far it looks good. So it's an example of a dynamic contrast enhancement that helped identify a pituitary tumor in a patient where the original post-contrast image was done a little later in the sequence that we would like to see. All right, so um, Dr. Lewis Blevins, Pituitary World News. Hope you're enjoying this series of uh, MRI videos. I know that I'm enjoying sharing findings with you and hope that you can take something from each one that will help you better understand your MRI studies. Uh, have a good afternoon.